January 24th, 2018, Heroes of the Storm patch notes. Blaze has been out for two weeks now. And he'll be playable in just two days in the HGC, the Heroes Global Championship. My previous prediction was that he wasn't going to see any play this weekend yet. But we will see. Now there are some patch changes. And it looks like he's going to get some buffs. Well, I went through them already. So I'm not going to do my usual prediction about which one is going to get buffed, which one is going to get nerfed. Uh, we already kind of know that. So let's just jump right into it. The following eight heroes are going to receive some balance changes. And we will try to explain you why we think it happened. Explain whether we think it's appropriate in the right direction. And whether the numbers will make that a better talent, yes or no. Just going to reduce the music a little bit further as it's getting a little bit hyphy. And there we go. Hanzo. One of our favorite assassins in the Nexus presently. Hanzo is getting first picked, first banned in the professional scene, despite only being out for a little while. And he's very popular. He's fun to play as. He's a pretty long distance, safe, ranged assassin that can put out a lot of damage. While with his range, can stay fairly safe. Together with his tank buster talent, the armor debuff at 7. And his great wave clear at 4. Hanzo is good for any situation it looks like he's going to get some nerfs a three damage nerf on his auto attack it isn't all too much but it's not too bad either three damage nerf stormboat's gonna get a six damage nerf again very small they're scared to make him rest in obsolescence obsolescence to get over the rainer small changes scatter arrow two damage less as well on the ricochet damage the level 7 talent, much maligned. Tempo Storm Psalm doesn't think that uh, Sharpened Arrows is the best. He recognizes that Europe thinks this is the best. But in North America, they really like full scatter arrow build. They admit it's harder to use. Obviously, it has great wave clear and camp clear potential. Now, it looks like Sharpened Arrowheads is going to have... Um, which is the one that we use in Europe. For example, ADRD used this one together with the level 4 bonus range and single target minion clear talent. So you have 9.5 range. You can auto, sh uh, well, full shot a single minion per auto attack. And then the armor debuff. This is on both auto attacks and storm bow. It will only be up to minus 20 armor instead of minus 25. Having seen these changes, and having seen Hanzo's both popularity and effectiveness, I feel like it's a little bit too light. Even if his basic attack, Stormbow and Scatter Arrow damage get nerfed a little bit, we're talking about a few percentage points here. And it doesn't really change his great ability to torch any target within his range with the armor debuff. Even though it's 5 less, this is still too good in my opinion. And at level 4, he still has the serrated arrows that can take any creep camp on the map in three to six seconds including a boss so it's pretty crazy and those two problem talents are still there and if they continue to leave these in their current strength and serrated arrows at four he's going to keep having to get base damage nerfs in order to bring him in line but they're addressing him in the wrong manner in my opinion they could either reduce his range or remove sharpened arrowheads from procking off of auto attacks. Yeah, either this should only proc off of Stormbow and not auto attack, or it should be removed or changed, in my opinion. And Scatter Arrow at 4, which is the PvE, is still too strong, so it makes Hanto in that sense too strong there. It's two talents that are the main issue, and since they are not addressed appropriately, you need this, and I think you'll need this again. He'll, so... On the other hand, for Hanzo lovers, he's still good. So, no need to be concerned about anything. It's small nerfs, but it doesn't really change anything. Valera. So Valera had a useful silence build. And it was great anti-dive, which was great against Tracer, Genji, uh, and the like. And in that sense, I felt like she filled a, a very important design role. Now, because she is... Because people are used to her being useless, 
it was very frightening that she was useful for a while. And so Garot build got nerfed like six times over. Now buffs again because her win rate was already poor despite the overpowered silence build. And now she's going to get buffs to other talents. Ambush, armor reduction duration. I didn't even know that Ambush gave minus armor. <laughs> Wait, let me check Valero real quick. Bah, Lyra, ambush. Heavily damaged an enemy. It says. Well met, my friend. Yes, well met. Well, I need to go into try mode. Because <laughs> it doesn't say exactly what ambush does when you look at her. Okay. Looking forward to it. Oh, reduce their armor by ten. Okay, I didn't know that. Cool. So this is going to be uh, ten armor debuff for five seconds instead of four. Uh, she's gonna get a little bit more energy from vigor she will get a full block instead well of a met, my friend yeah 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 thank you she's gonna get a full block instead of a, a slightly smaller block more energy reduction if you go with the relentless strikes here more damage on the shorter range sinister strike and also more damage on the quest for w blind will last longer after the stun passes of cheap shot and finally, more energy on Adrenaline Rush. Overall buffs and talents that currently do not feature uh, Valera in the meta. So it's going to need a lot of testing for Valera players, for Valera lovers, to see if any of this offers merit. But because none of these are meta at the moment, it's not going to have any Valera change, in my opinion, in the next one to three weeks. If anything, we will discover slowly in three to four weeks that she is sleeper strong uh, at, at the earliest. So I'm personally not going to jump on her yet, but I never really am against buffing 40% win rate assassins. I think she's at 43 or something, uh, especially in talents that are the less popular. So I think it's worth a try. If you like her, try her out in quick match. Sergeant Hammer is the kind of hero that right now in Hero League is not very useful, but is still sitting at top win rates across different leagues, across different playing modes. So apparently this must be a quick match nerf, because this is a 33% reduction in healing on her level 4, and she also gets a nerf of 0.3, up to 0.3, in her range on graduating. Hammer feels difficult to deal with in quick match, but I'm still baffled that Hammer gets nerfed before Greymane. It must be some kind of quick match nerf, but... Hammer is no more oppressive in quick match than a Greymane, Genji or Hanzo is in Hero League. But it gets dealt with immediately. But the... Uh... This is disappointing to me, because she's already not viable. And Valera, by the way, at 41% according to uh, chat. 41% win rate, so it's worth having some buffs. So, Hammer got some nerfs. Now, Sylvanas nerfs. Small HP nerf, very small HP nerf. A nerf to Shadow Dagger and Shadow Dagger cooldown. So, Sylvanas needed a nerf in her trait, but she needed a buff in team fighting prowess. I feel like these changes exactly misunderstand everything that's wrong with Sylvanas. Right now, Sylvanas, if you want to simplify things, she is an asset to have when the opponent messes up and loses a hero. When Sylvanas' team carries her effectively to an advantage, she uses favorable odds better than any other hero in the game. When you have her on your side and you get a lead, it is the traditional snowball again that was momentarily active during the Christmas patch changes, eh, five level leads all the time. Savannah still lives in that era. She still empowers that er era. And so she is the most unhealthy component of the game, even more so than any other assassin in non-competitive. In non-competitive. Most unhealthy hero because of Black Arrow. And these two things made her more effective at teamfight. Yes, it also made her effective at poking to empower your objective, 
because you, sh you throw the shadow dagger it locks down the fort the towers and you know your boss your punisher doesn't get hit for a while but it's when you get a hero advantage or two hero advantage or a talent and you push with her she's meleeing anyway she's she's using her auto attack to lock it down the shadow dagger was what made her a little bit good in team fights and the level 16 talent for the w gave an armor debuff it's where she actually became a good team fight hero the, these two things are changed so she's even weaker at team fight due to less health and less w's and it doesn't change a thing about her pushing with punisher when you have a small lead and keep in mind sometimes sylvanas falls behind and that team loses but sometimes any team gets ahead against a non Sylvanas comp or with non Sylvanas comp. They take a small lead. Sometimes they can expand upon the lead, sometimes not. But Sylvanas always expands upon a lead, which leads to the snowball. This just is completely in the wrong direction. And black trade, black arrow trade continues to be unaddressed. And I, I think it's, it's really poor changes. Now, in terms of stopping the snowball when you're losing to Sylvanas, she does have slightly less health. So, she's a little bit easier to kill for a Zeratul, Nova, Judgment or whatever. But it doesn't take away the problem that it's when you're already down 4-5 to five against the Sylvanas team. You still can't do anything much unless, you know, they, they mess up. So, and, and it addresses two things at the same time. Makes her worse at team fight, and you can kill her a bit easier when they're pushing. But it should have only dealt with the push problem. Brightwing, not the top support exactly, and it's a single support meta, so it's nice. She's a little bit less squishy, and I would say this is a good change. It's not too big, but it just makes her a little bit more viable. Taronda, again, she's not a good solo support, and it's not very kind on double support right now, but it's possible. Though most Toronto players in Hero League, they play her because they think she's like a cool poke spammer and, and ganker. Whereas Toronto like Sylvanas as a teamwork hero. But most people who play Toronto play her like a solo solo person. If Toronto team works well, she's an interesting hero that can be an asset to your team. But most people play Toronto, uh, make it hard to win the game. This buff is small enough that it doesn't matter. But it's big enough that more people are going to play Tyrande. So I expect Tyrande's win rate to drop from this, to be honest. Blaze gets buff. Significant HP buff to Bunker. Combustion now preventing the double tap insta cast. I think that's good. And some significant buffs to the CDR on the Q. The damage on the Q. The PvE damage on auto attack that also tortures your oil. And a nerf to the quest. More spell power reduction on the Q. So that's triple Q buffs already. Uh, oh, this is a good change. That's a good change. Because this was really annoying to use. Because you weren't allowed to torch it on fire too fast. And more shields on your E. Oh no, this is the active. This is the spell block that gives you a shield for spell damage blocked. Small buff, but it was the worst talent, so it's fine. Nice, I'll, I'll try out some more blaze. It's, uh, it's some pretty interesting buffs. Sonya, four damage less on auto attack. Huge nerf, actually. Now, Sonya is pretty good. She's pretty damn good. Though my win rate with her has been pretty poor. And she's still good and popular. Uh, but this is a big nerf. Especially for her laning. Poison Spear nerf is fine. It's back to where it was. Maybe take some more follow through again. I don't know. It's fine. Uh, this was almost a must pick. Though the no escape is pretty good as well. Which is the movement speed. 25%. 5% less max health. 2 seconds less. But can use it more often. Pretty big nerf. And a large part of her survivability. The problem with this is that. Sonia was fine in laning. She kind of struggles around level 10, 13, ironically. Even though she gets Wrath of the Berserker or Leap, it's, it's really the early game that she was pretty good. 
And then she has to kind of play safe in the mid game. And then at 16 she becomes monstrous. And with 20 she's a super monster. And this is kind of Sonya's cadence in a game. And and that's why like late game she's really good. Because of Nurse of Steel and Ignore Pain. Now with this one nerfed a bit. I feel like it's another hero that's like wait for level 20. Like Nazebo and... Well, who else? Like... Not, not sure that so much of her power should be locked behind level 20. But I guess overall it's just a very popular character that's strong and good. And beats most solo laners. And she gets a few nerfs. I think the nerfs are a little bigger. And she's a warrior that gets nerfed. But the top assassins still remain untouched. I feel like that's a little biased towards assassins. But overall it's not too bad. It's pretty okay. So overall, Sonya is fine. Blaze is significant buffs. I think it's fine. I think Blaze is very strong now, actually. Very strong. Viable. I actually expect to see him in HCC now. Taronda, like I said, I think it's going to drop her win rate, but it's fine. This is good as well. This is completely off the mark. Um, purely quick match nerf and off the mark. Valero buffs are fine. Let's try it out. And Hanzo nerfs are fine, probably not big enough, and not addressing the two major issues. That's my summary. Hope you enjoyed it.